Hello, everybody. Um, I guess we can get started now. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of, we've got a couple new people today. That's going to be really good. Um, so today and, and all of this week, it took some technical difficulties uh, sorting through until I think I got some stuff figured out. We're, we've been working in the working zone. A good friend of mine that I met a couple of years ago in, in Austria, uh, Nicholas Intermude. I'm totally mispronouncing your name. I'm sorry, Nicholas. Uh, came up with this book. He plays up in Helsinki. Um, the, the, he's a tubist up there at the symphony. And um, he worked with a couple people to develop just a really good scale book. And as you can see, the, the, the main crooks, chapter two, has something like 62 different scales you can work with. So yesterday, we were working on some jazz scales. Uh, today, we're going to actually... Uh, move on to some of the um, pentatonic scales and do some other different things, but we're going to have uh, we're going to do it a little bit differently. Instead of just working on the scales themselves and our tone, we're going to actually focus today on dynamics and articulations. We're just going to use the scales to do that. So, um, uh, Jimmy, if you're new, just kind of uh, hang on for a little bit, and you'll kind of catch the drift. It's really simple. And uh, for everybody else, we're just going to start rolling through. Uh, like we normally do with a lot of back and forth. So let me scroll across over here. Uh, we might jump back to some of these flow studies and interval studies, but right now I want to start, yeah, we're going to get to the diminished blues flat nines scale. Ethiopian major, um, that one's going to be fun, but we're just going to do, we're going to start off really simple here with our major pentatonic, and we're going to start with some um, articulation exercises. So the way that this book works is it's, it's almost like a giant matrix of different things you can do, and there's a little um, pullout that has some articulations uh, that you can work on every note. So what we're going to work on right now is just... We're going we're gonna to change what articulation we're going to do on every scale. So we're just going to go back and forth on uh, one scale at a time, and we're going to do one note at a time, but for every note, we're going to do a rhythm exercise. So Dave, you ready to, to lead us out on this one? I'm going to play a, uh, a rhythm, and you're just going to copy it back, and we're going to try to, <laughs> hopefully I'll play the same rhythm the entire exercise. And let me know if my mic cuts out. I think I've got the levels good. All right, here we go. One note at a time here. And your turn, Dave. Oh. oh. Moving some stuff around here, okay. Is my mic on? Oh, uh, yeah, it's on.
So just uh, really quickly, right at the outset, you're going to tell uh, today that, that for some reason latency is a little bit higher than normal. So we're just going to have to go with it. Uh, play with whoever, play the second time and try to stay right in tempo with the person that you're playing with. There is going to be just a little bit of a delay, so just kind of roll with it and, and play along with whoever uh, you, you want to. It's easier to, to, to time the play along with. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take the same articulation, yum, ba ba bum, ba ba bum, ba ba bum, and we're going to, since it's four repeats, we're going to play it with four different styles of articulation. Legato first time, ya da da, and then um, marcato, da da da, and then uh, a regular bum bum bum, bouncy style, and then staccato, ba ba ba. So ya da 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 da. Try to get four different flavors of articulation on there. So let's move on to G. Um, e e Sorry, question. Is this yes. the smooth one first or all four? Smoothest okay. first, yes. So, so we're doing the, the four times, so smoothest, um, just a little bit of separation. Um, bouncy for the third one, bouncy a bit long, and then the fourth one is nice and, nice and bouncy. Lots of space the first time, so. Let's do it all, all over again. I'll try to do a better job of modeling. Okay, let's try it again. I'll, I'll, I'll go first and we'll just try, I'll try to model it a little bit better here. Yeah, that is that is a little trickier uh, than it is before. So when we're on these microphones, it's going to try to hide some of the uh, musical shaping that we're doing. Just do the best that you, you you can with that, and we'll keep on going with uh, going with that. This is, I think, a really good exercise to do because once it's recorded and you're hearing yourself, you know, coming through, you can you can really tell if you're actually getting four different levels of articulation. So let's uh, move on to D, and let me pick someone else. Alex, you're next on my list. Are you okay with uh, helping us with this one? Yep. 
All right, let me uh, make sure I pin my video. By the way, if you uh, right click in gallery mode, you can click pin video and it'll keep it from jumping around. So you can hopefully read the music a little bit better. I think you get more uh, bandwidth. So we're here on D. And I want to I want to do at least these these different styles, but let's change it up a little bit. Let's do sixteenth notes and then and then a, a quarter rest. So it'll sound like this. So same four patterns. We're gonna go. Now let's just do three. Ba da da. Uh, okay. So let's add add a downbeat. And then we'll just do that three beats. Okay, you ready for that? Let's try if we can get them all more legato. Good. All right. Let's move on to A. Let's do. Let's. Uh, you good with doing the same thing? What are your opinions on this? What do you What do you feel? It's kind of hard about this particular exercise. Uh, I 
feel like my lips are getting too soft at some points. So then I'm starting to not being able to form the valve. And then sometimes the notes don't speak. All right. So there's these two things you just, you just said right there that really rang a bell with me. Cause it's kind of, you know, tuba is not my main instrument. I shouldn't say that. Of course it's every instrument's my main instrument. <laughs> no, but so I need to put in a lot of practice on tuba to try to, um, feel even just comfortable on it. So that's one of the issues that I have because when switching around from a smaller mouthpiece to the larger mouthpiece, um, you need to be comfortable with not having the embouchure change. So it's, it's a different setting. It's a different embouchure to play the tuba. Um, bigger embouchure, let's just put it that way. But the trick is, is that when I'm moving things around, my uh, mm, default setting or my desire is to want to shrink down to euphonium trombone size and then go back up to the tuba size. And that creates a change. That change and that excessive motion in the embouchure is the thing that keeps me personally from uh, keeps those notes from speaking the way that I want them to. So when we're playing in an extreme range on uh, on on our instruments, that's another tendency where we feel that we need to manipulate something to get that note to come out, and that's actually the thing that detracts from the ability for that note to speak. Uh, so that's just a long way of saying, yeah, keep it still, <laughs> I guess. But um, that that's the hard part is trying to figure out what that setting is and not changing it while we're doing the, our articulation. But there is one more thing that's going to be really helpful, um, and you kind of alluded to it that you. You, you feel like you have to move it. The big secret, uh, you know, to try, to try to get it to speak, don't worry about the process. Just focus on the result that you want before you start. Focus on, on the, the, the product, and then if you mess up while you're playing, it doesn't matter because you know how to play your, your euphonium. So just focus on the goal and just kind of let yourself stay on the bike. So you focus where you're pedaling. You don't focus on how you're supposed to keep your balance. And that's, that's what's going to help, help us through this. And there, I just talked for three minutes, and that's, that's better than my usual 10. Let's move on. All right, E. All right. Because if you're having it, I think literally everybody, including me, is having this exact same, same issue uh, especially when we're switching around articulation. So don't think about what you need to do to articulate. Think about the actual sound you want each three times and don't worry about whether or not you play it correct for right now because this is just practicing. I think we're on A, actually. We're on A? Oh, gosh, man, this is taking forever. All right, I'm sorry. I'll speed up a little bit here. So same exercise, uh, three groups of 16th note articulations. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
already 20 minutes in, so I better move on to something else because we're going to get stuck too much in there. Really good practice because it really helps you focus on whether or not you're getting your articulation exactly the way you want it want it to be. So, yeah, really good job, Alex. That, that is a tricky thing to be doing. All right, I see Cody up here. Cody, if you are here, can you give me a thumbs up? Trying to see if I see Cody. I don't see a thumbs up. All right, let's move over to Jimmy. Hello, Jimmy. Nice to meet you. Oh, I'm trying to unmute hello. you. There you are. Uh, hello, hello. So uh, are, are you in school right now or? Uh, I'm tr trying to check. Yeah. I've never met before. All right. What, what school do you go to? Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State. Well, um, I'm taking a look at this next scale, scale I'm looking at doing is, uh, is a whole tone scale. And I was planning on, on working on um, uh, dynamic change on the articulation. Um, so let's try to do that on the, on the whole, whole tone scales, uh, 16th notes and we'll go, actually, let me just go ahead and play it and you can, uh, uh, copy it back and hopefully lead it better than I'm doing it right now. So here we go. Um, so we'll just do, uh, four sets of 16th crescendo for two as, uh, starting from pianissimo up to fortissimo and then back down for two measures. And, uh, we'll don't worry about articulations cause we, we've, we've got a couple middle schoolers, a lot of high schoolers and, and, and a couple college, uh, uh, college undergrads and, and at least two professors on here. So, um, this is something that, um, if you're just working on it, don't worry about the dynamics for right now. Focus on really being right in time. Um, as, as you're a good player, uh, as, as you're comfortable with this exercise, stretch your dynamics as being the most important aspect of this one. Make sure we're having the same consistent tone when you're playing soft as when you get loud. All right, Jimmy, thanks for joining us today. And uh, yeah, let's get started. Here we go. All right. I, it's it's completely all right, and also the uh, the the microphones act a little funny yeah. on on Zoom too. So here we go on C. Uh, sorry, on on D, the second note.
Great. Now, let's just kick it up a little bit faster so we can get through more of these. Here we go. Excellent. All right. You can tell uh, it's easy to do two, like uh, three of the four things well. You can, it, it's easy to have a good sound. It's easy to play with a wide dynamic range. It's easy to, uh, you know, play a wide pitch range, high and low. And it's easy to have a good response. But what's hard is most people can do three of those four things really well. And there's always one thing that's a little tricky. And no matter what you do, yeah. um, it's easy to do three of those four. So focus really hard, even if it takes away from your ability to do some of the others. Try to get a good balance of all four of those, and you'll be surprised how quickly it'll it'll take over. It's just a matter of expectations and, and more of, we've been talking about this a lot the last couple of days, um, uh, not so your, your, your self-image, but your ability to hear yourself playing it. Once you get that, that is almost the hardest part to do. Once you can hear yourself doing it correctly in your head, then it's almost easy. It's, it, it's super easy to, to do because it's an expectation kind of level thing. Uh, and, and it's one of those things is most of us just think about doing one of those goals at a time instead of a good balance of all four of those. So let's just start uh, D. I'll take it a little bit faster. do 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 just like that. Uh, any of the youngins following along, if you want to switch down to eighth notes, that's perfectly fine. <laughs> Thank you. 
good so this is a pretty tricky exercise to get everything everything um, rolling along really well but it's one of those things once you hear yourself doing it and once you can see yourself playing it in your head it's, it's a fear, bad way of saying it but once you have that goal m my best way to describe that is if you're shooting darts you have to really be able to visualize that bullseye really well and see that dart hitting the bullseye before you have any chance of getting it right. You could be holding it the right way, you could have the, your elbow in the right place and that right follow through, but the, the hard part is really getting that visualization of what that end result is that you want. So um, making that end goal more detailed, even if we're playing a very simple exercise, but if we have the more um, elements, the more variables we have that we're turning into constants, so we, we want it exactly sound like that, um, the, the better we're going to be able to, to make it sound natural and easy and like we're not working hard at all. All right, thanks a bunch, Jimmy. Nice to meet you. I apologize it's, you know, through the, one of these Zoom cameras, you can't, I, I have trouble telling how old people are. <laughs> like, I'll talk to, to Cody and think he's in college and, and I can't really tell. Um, yeah, you, you just can't tell through these cameras. All right, so nice to meet you. Let's move on to some uh, regulars. John, let's have you lead us through some of these earlier exercises because uh, it's 11.35. Um, instead of the scales, I'm looking at... Let's actually uh, work some of these interval exercises. How does that sound for you? Sure. And this is how I want us to play it. I want you to slur, so slur tongue, and I want us to crescendo the first note and diminuendo the second note. And uh, try to come in on my rest because this latency thing is, is is a thing. So you'll probably be right on, you know, for the camera if if we do it that way. I'm gonna pull yeah. this up just a little bit so we can get um, these two exercises in. And uh, how about you lead us? Okay. Start as soft as you can.
Okay, that was really good. Yeah, I really liked how, as you kept on going, your, your dynamics got wider and wider, and that was wonderful. The wide dynamics, you know, we're playing into computer microphones. Don't worry about getting too loud. But really focus on um, how soft we can get. I'm looking at my computer, and I've got this little meter. And when I play as soft as I can, it's like showing up at, at, at 8 out of 10. And when I'm playing as loud as I can, it's showing up as 9 out of 10. So, you know... Uh, the difference between uh, volume, decibel measurement, and dynamics is, is not as, as good as a relationship as you'd want. So the secret is, is let's see how quiet we can get those dynamics to start. And what we're really working on more than just the dynamics is our um, response, trying to get those lips flapping. So see if we can come in from nothing. I do want us to articulate the first note. that we, we worked on air attacks before. That's not what we're doing right now. But I just want us to see if we can start as soft as we can possibly do it. You did such a good job. Do you want to keep on going? Sure. All right. Let's do it. Uh, do that one more time and see how soft you can start. Really good, John. It's coming along. So you can tell that the last couple of days, we actually haven't been doing fast exercises. And that's kind of intentional because we were doing, doing some fast exercises earlier. And, and, and there's a reason for it. We're going to do something slow and specific right now. You know, I, I, I'm a firm believer in mixing it up like week to week as well as day by day and still having a lot of continuity in what you're doing. So one of the next uh, books I'm going to be looking at does have a lot of fast exercises for, for any of you who might be bored and just kind of want to want to impress your friends or something with lip slurs. I, I don't know. But, but yes, very good job, uh, John. It's working. It's, it's amazing how the more specific you listen, the, the less difficult you need to necessarily practice um, to still get the, the job done that you need to get done. So remember, this is a daily routine uh, warm-up exercise to make sure what we're having it works. And when you're working on your difficult, I highly recommend, right at 12 o'clock when you turn this off, pull out the solo that you're working on, pull out the etude books that you're working on. Um, if you're in high school, the method books that you're working on, and start 
hitting the difficult music you you were having trouble actually physically um, getting the notes on, you'll be surprised how a lot of those uh, fast, difficult passages you were working on all of a sudden become easy once your mechanism just becomes more natural and you're thinking about it less and it's and um, you just get these responses uh, that we're working on when we're working on dynamics. All right, I'm done talking. I talk too much, but some people might argue that we're just playing too much on this. I, I don't think so. I think it's good to play all the time. All right, Naomi, let's switch to you next. How are you doing today? Good. I'm good. Excellent. Excellent. I At just, the top. Um, quick um, disclaimer. So earlier on in the middle of one of the things, I clicked something and now my like sheet is like blown up. So like two measures are cut off from the beginning and I, oh, and end. I don't know what I, I don't know how to fix it. Oh no. <laughs> Did you, do you? Wait, let me see. Let me try what he said. Wait a minute. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well now it, it's okay. It's still blown up. Oh, I fixed it. Thanks. Thanks. Don. Excellent. Yeah. It's yeah, the, the, every, everybody's computer running on different systems. Like zoom looks completely different on a, a, everything that you put it on. So <laughs> thanks so much for the tech support, John. <laughs> he, he was the one who taught me how to pin windows. So, all right. Um, I'm, I'm moving on. I want to do something a little bit different. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Let's do this. Um, we have a little bit of time left, and we might even just get done a little bit early today. But uh, Naomi, why don't you help us with um, these exercises? Sound good? These simple flow mm -hmm. exercises. Yeah. So let's, what's the simplest way to do it? Let's just do one, one line at a time, and when we get to the triplets, we'll do it one measure at a time. Sound good? Yeah. And what I want you to do, I want you, since this is... Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, nice, smooth, and legato. As legato as you can get it, but I want it to be clean. Clean and legato. Those are the two goals. And if you want okay. to add a little crescendo through the entire line, that's going to help you get that musical direction in there. So you want me to do the, like, the whole line, like, all the way through all the notes? One T. How about like, this? Let, like me, through, let me do it first, like and you can finger? copy me. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it first, and you okay, can copy yeah. me. Like that, as smooth as you can. See, what's interesting is your 16th notes, which are the hardest ones, actually sounded like the easiest part of that for you. Let's do it again, and let's see almost gliss tonguing. I want you to gliss and, and, and tongue, just maybe just a little bit of a tongue. And if you don't tongue and it's just a gliss, that's okay. Let's see how smooth we can get these. <sighs> So your 16th notes are great. Other than the 16th notes, it really sounds like you're separating these more than I want you to. Do you, oh, can, okay. can you, okay, so it's, so, and that's the thing, it's a, sometimes it's more about like um, explaining the instructions more than it's your ability to do it. So wanna, let's just do it again one more time. And I really <laughs> want us to work on, um, ah, let's go back to something. Uh, back to the mouthpiece. Oh. So let's just buzz this real quick and, and just nothing, nothing too crazy. As I'm buzzing this, I want you to to really listen and realize I'm not uh, 
I'm not doing steps. You can't actually, it doesn't sound like I'm playing the notes. It should just sound like vibrato. Is not what I want. That was a bad example. That was steps. I want it to sound just like a really slow oscillation. Nice and smooth. Try that on your own. Okay. Oh, buzzing? Buzzing. Buzzing. Do you Do you hear how it sounds oh. like uh like auto tune? Like um ba instead of ba I want you to get oh. more of the gliss in between. Being able to do that on the mouthpiece is going to make it sound so much smoother on your trombone. Give it a try again. That's it. That's much harder than it than it than it feels like it should be, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds really good. So that's exactly what I want you to do. Now we're going to do the same thing back into the instrument because we shouldn't spend too much time. I've got a lot of tricks, except it's not good to do the tricks instead of practicing. So right back to practicing. <laughs> Sorry, uh, slower tempo. turn. Everybody join in. So now, the, okay, it's okay. My the, articulation. the thing that I heard now, you are articulating the first couple of measures like you were doing your 16th notes. That's exactly how I wanted you to do it. Does it feel different or something? It, yeah, it feels different because um, I don't know what it is with the 16th. Like, I felt like I was working harder than the other ones, but it sounded like... And so, like, whenever I do the... If I did the exact same articulation for those, I feel like it would sound more like broken up like I was doing a way softer articulation for those than the like than I was doing for the 16th earlier and it's like just registered you know different out there I guess I I liked what you did that that time let's do it again and I, and I wrote, want everybody to think about that so you were actually tonguing much softer that time yeah way softer. across the board it sounded cleaner yeah so Here's the, 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 oh. the question I've, uh, I've heard a lot before. Um, when you're playing staccato and you're playing legato and when you're playing regular, does your tongue do anything differently? No. Aha. Uh -huh. not, not really. It's uh -huh. the length of the notes mostly. And the shape of the notes. So really yeah, a lot of people... A lot of people really over articulate everything when they're when when they're playing. So you just figured it out right there. It was so much smoother, it sounded really great. Loved it. Um, really focus on how light you actually have to move it because when just like if you ever if anybody's done taekwondo or any kind of martial art, the uh, the harder you try to punch, the more you clench up, the slower your punch is going to be. And most people when they want to punch harder, they 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 clench their muscles, and it actually makes the punch weaker. Actually, this is this is more boxing than anything. Mm -hmm. That the strongest punch is the one that just feels like you're flailing your arm, um, because the thinking of moving it faster actually transfers more energy. So when you want to tongue, if you just think of light and you think of pulling back more than you're thinking of the tongue coming up, da 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 da, da that act of pulling that tongue back is going to be the thing that actually cleans up your sound. So. Um, Absolutely. The lighter the tongue, you can you can tongue as staccato as you want to with that super light tongue. And 
you could do two things. You could think about that a whole bunch and then like go crazy and get it wrong, or you could just practice it till you get it right. All right, so they'll if I lighten it yeah. up, it'll probably be it'll probably sound better. That's exactly how I want you to think about it. Okay, very good. Instead of doing that same one over again, let's just do two T. Um, so it's B natural to C. <laughs> bit more practice and we'll get that one really good you know i'd rather actually just do that one more time than than, than move on uh i wanted to do 3t but let's not get to that by the way i like to call this the jaws exercise <laughs> if you haven't yeah. seen it all you young kids go home and watch watch it on netflix <sighs> exactly it all right so today it really kind of seems like we had kind of a lax day but i, I really heard a lot of progress on everybody because um sometimes playing the easy stuff really well is a lot harder than just playing things faster so really good work everybody really really good work um i guess it's today's friday all these all these days are blurring together is today friday is there, no. okay oh gosh yes Whew. everything's blurring together <laughs> and that's amazing because at least <laughs> Well, well, at least we're, we're, we're playing together. All right, so it was really good hearing everybody. Nice to meet you, Jimmy. Hopefully we could see you on Monday. Uh, if you're digging this, I promise we, we can do harder things <laughs> here in the near future too for anybody who's getting bored. But um, yeah, it's really good playing with you all. So take care, stay safe. Um, yeah, don't get bored. Do a lot of practicing because there's no excuse. Everybody's going to better sound like beasts when we're, <laughs> when we're out of quarantine and we finally have our first gig. It's going to be amazing. Bring back live music. All right, so everyone take care. See you on Monday. Uh, email me if you have any questions, if you you know have any questions on like Etude books or something. So everyone take care. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs>